Okay, so today we are going, uh, we have a, an amazing, awesome patient here who I delivered a denture to, okay? She has two lower mini implants, okay? And the same goes for uh, regular implants. The process is the same. Um, so what I did is I delivered the, the uh, denture to her and then let her go about a week or so uh, to get rid of all sore spots, okay? So she's got about a week. We've got rid of all the sore spots. And now we're going to put on the locators, okay? So in this case for the mini implants, uh, it's locators with little O-rings in it. Uh, with regular implants, it's going to be little uh, plastic type um, rings that go around the uh, implant locators, okay? So the procedure that we walk out for this is called the precision attachment. Um, the challenging portion of this whole procedure is the ability to have your heavy or your hard reline material go around and lock your um, locators into the denture without locking around the implant, okay? So what are some things that we're gonna do to try to mitigate uh, that difficulty? Um, first of all, we're gonna put lingual um, um, escape holes, okay, for the hard reline material, okay? Second of all, we are going to use light body as a way to uh, block out our undercuts, okay? Um, some systems have a little uh, white ring that would go around the implant. Uh, you can use that. In this instance, the, um, the mini implants uh, don't have a little white ring, so we're gonna use light body instead. So we'll try to take videos of all of these, um, the little important portions of all of the uh, procedure. Okay, so you can see on the denture that I've already shelled out uh, uh, access holes here for our mini implants, um, but I did that without having the locators um, on top of the implants. So my next uh, step is to put the locators on the dent on the implants and then see if the, the indenture will seat uh, with that. So I'm gonna have to kind of shell them out. Now you can see here that, you know, I'm pretty close to the edge of my uh, denture there and the same thing here. Um, so I've made the patient aware that, you know, just the configuration of these mini implants, we might have to have little, little bubbles of uh, hard relay material um, just because of how close it is to the exterior of the denture. Okay. Okay, so we've done our adjustments here, okay? And you can see that the denture, uh, because of the placement of the implants, uh, we're a little bit buckle there and then we're a little bit lingual on this side, okay? So what are the two uh, burrs that I used um, to do this, okay? My main burr was this one over here, okay? You can see that it's a little bit more squarish, so it gives me space for my squarish uh, locators. Sometimes I'll, I'll use this other burr too, okay? So the big secret here is to do one at a time, okay? So I uh, shelled out her right side, made sure that that fit perfectly, and then I shelled out her left side to make sure that that fit perfectly. Then I put them both in, and they both fit perfectly together, okay? The other instrument I used here was a Thompson stick or an indelible pen. So what I did is I came in. Okay. So what I did was I, I ran this underwater, I marked the top of the uh, locator, and then I came in and I put the denture in, and then it marked where it was rubbing up against the denture, and then I adjusted that. Okay. So now you can see I have both locators there and you can see that the implants are sticking up just a tiny little bit and you're going to see that with uh, a little bit older implants with some recession. But when I place the denture in, you can see that it fits. Okay. Now you can see how some of those implants are going to fit. They're going to be a little bit uh, sticking out towards the cheek and I've made the uh, patient aware 
um, that there's gonna be a little pink bubble so it can encase that housing. Okay, so my strategy, like I said, is to make sure that I don't have any undercuts, okay? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take light body and I'm gonna fill that and then I'm going to, and we always work on one at a time. So I'm gonna come in here and I'm gonna let that sit, okay? Okay, so then I'm gonna remove the one, okay? As lightly as possible. Okay, and that actually worked out pretty well. So you can see here that uh, the light body stayed and the locator um, also stayed, okay? So, pause there. Okay, so I, I'm kind of removing the light body here uh, to get our little apparatus here that will stay around the implant and uh, prevent the undercuts. So I'm gonna cut this back. Okay, okay, good. okay so you can see that I've modified this so that I can see that my housing actually fits over this. Um, and I will not have an undercut, okay? So it's basically like a custom, uh, a, cost, a custom block out, okay? So there we go. So now we'll work on the other one. Okay, so uh, I have both of my custom block outs created here, and then we will put on our, um, our locators. Okay, so I practice, just make sure that this uh, will go on there, uh, on top of the two uh, blockouts, custom blockouts, and I also had the locators on there. So I know that it fits. Now I'm gonna get the denture ready. Now, I am only going to do one at a time, okay? Um, I am gonna have the custom blockout and the locator on the other side, but I'm not going to put the hard reline material. I'm only going to put it in on this right side first. Once that's secured, then I will do the other side. Okay. Take some of our bonding agent. Okay. Um, and then we're going to use a micro brush and we're going to coat it on the surfaces here. Okay. Now, one other suggestion is, is to put in retentive grooves okay so if i'm going to put in a retentive groove i'm going to take my crown prepper and i'm going to go distally here and mesially here okay um so that i have physical lock-ins okay now this one doesn't actually need it because i have a big lock-in over here but with most of them i could even put in four so uh essentially divergent holes that will have physical retention of the uh, material added to the bonding agent to make it super retentive, okay? So I'm gonna load my hard reline material in there, okay? And I have my lingual vents, which is nice, okay? And you can see that I have my custom blockouts and I'm gonna come in and go right down into my final configuration, okay? Now, this material can get hot, okay? So you tell me if it gets hot and I will pull out immediately, okay? Uh -huh. And the second it gets hot, it also gets hard, so that's kind of the final spot. That's why it's important to only do one at a time. And, and I haven't had a ton of issues with people feeling like it's burning them on the lowers, 
but if it, it goes up next to the soft palate, it can definitely get hot to the point where it can uh, cause them some issues. So, so the patient expressed that it was hot. Now, if I did not have our custom block out, this potentially would not have come out of her mouth and it would have caused a, a huge issue. If, but because I had the custom block out, hey, it came out and we're good to go. So now I'm gonna take out the custom block out and then we'll move to the other side. Okay, so the same thing on the other side. Now with this other side, I'm not gonna have the custom block out because we already have the um, locator there. So we're just gonna do custom block out on this side and then we're gonna load our heavy or hard relaying material. Okay, and then we have that big vent, which is nice. And the patient now knows the procedure, which is, if it gets hot, you raise your hand and we pull. Okay, so you see that uh, the locators are in the denture now, and now it's just a, um, a function of trying it in. Uh, we're gonna take off some of this uh, excess here and just make it perfect for the patient, okay? We are gonna smooth this out, polish this up, make sure that that's perfect, and the same thing with this lingual vent too, and then uh, we should be good to go.